Hello again, and welcome back once again to another sound design tutorial. Today we're going to be looking at making a grenade sound, or rather an explosion sound. Um, I'm going to show you some things I've come up with, um, as well as some tips that should help you uh, improve any explosion sounds that you already have. So, uh, let's jump straight into it. So as you can see, I've already uh, categorised my sounds into the blast of the sound and the tail of the sound. Let's have a listen to what they sound like together. So now I'm just going to quickly play the blast on its own. And then the tail on its own. Cool, so as you can see the tail is basically there to create a sort of after effect that you might hear from a grenade. So um, if you wanted to, if you're planning on using this sound in maybe a game that's set in a cave or uh, you know, somewhere rocky, you might want to add sort of maybe rocks and debris falling uh, just after the explosion. Uh, I've gone for some sort of, or I've attempted to go for a fire kind of sound. So you've just got some crackling cinders that just have finished catching a light right after the explosion. Um, I'm going to show you what I did in the tail, but first I'm going to start with the blast. So, now as you can see, I've got three recorded samples and I've also got two MIDI regions. So I'm going to start with the two or the three things I recorded first. So, as you can see, the first thing I recorded is a trash can. Now, what I did is I basically took uh, a metal uh, dustbin lid and I basically just dropped it onto the rest of the dustbin. Um, it's actually quite handy for me. Um, in our kitchen, we've got a sort of it's a it's a novelty sort of fifties New York style dustbin that you would see out on the streets um, that you might see in some old sort of films. Um, we've got one of them as our actual dustbin, which is perfect. It's made of a nice, loud metal. Um, so all I did was drop that, drop the lid onto the the bin, um, and it gave me a really nice sounding crash. Uh, if I quickly just take all the effects that I've added to it, I'm going to take all of these off, and then I'm going to just play you the sound raw so we know what we're working with. Oh. Whoops, that's the whole explosion. Don't want that. Let me quickly say uh, the trash can. Right. Oh, one second. Hmm, why is it not playing? Do I have to keep that on? I probably do. Let's quickly bump that up. There we go. Okay, so so that's the trash can lid just literally being dropped onto the rest of the dustbin. Uh, if I quickly zoom in a bit, um, I ended up adding this little bit of automation here where I, I've taken the initial sort of impact off just because um, I didn't... It was a bit too piercing. You can... Um, add a fade if you want uh, for some reason I've just automated it to take that out um, yeah it was a bit too piercing on the ear so a bit of an easier sort of um, a bit slower of an attack is what I was aiming for there the next thing I did was I stretched it out with uh, Logic's flex time I've used the speed option um, which which is well that's what it says on the tin really stretches out the sound um, and makes it sound more crunchy which is kind of what we want we want a really noisy distorted crunchy sound so let's have a listen with the stretch on let's let's quickly zoom out a bit so cool sounded pretty good uh and then i'll quickly run through the effects i've added so the gain i uh, basically i recorded this with a um uh a stereo xy setup just on my h5 um i didn't really want that i wanted it to be mono um but i didn't have any mono i didn't have any other microphones to spare other than those two x and y uh, attachment microphone, so I've just I've just quickly monitored it in Logic. Um, turn that back on. EQ uh, took out some of the like really l low um, frequencies just because I didn't want it too low. Um, a lot of speakers won't even produce like 20, 30 hertz anyway, so I took most of that out, uh, and I also added some of the mid to highs uh, in it. Uh, space designer, what I did with my reverb is I've actually used um, a reverb I created myself, as I've, and I, as you can see, I've called it Balloon Pop Church. Now, what I did is I, I was able to do some recording at a local church, and what I did is I set up two uh, microphones, so I recorded it in stereo, um, and what I did is I took a balloon and popped it in this uh, in this church. So I was capturing the sound of the balloon traveling around this church, and in Logic, you were able to take those impulse responses, like I've just recorded there, and you can actually turn them into your own reverb with Space Designer. Um, I'm not really going to show how to do that in today's tutorial, although that is something I might look into. But 
Um, in terms of the reverb you want to use, just have a mess around. I I was aiming for some something quite dark. Um, uh, I might show you what the balloon pop sounds like on its own in a minute, but I won't with the trash can because it sounds a bit um, muddy. And I've also automated it to sort of drop all the effects out. Um, so yeah, that's the reverb I use. But if you find a reverb you prefer, go ahead and use that. Um, it was just kind of coincidental that a reverb I'd made actually worked quite well for this. So anyway, so that's the reverb. Turn that back on. Bit Crusher. So this is how I distorted it. The Bit Crusher worked quite nicely for this. So I just sort of pushed up the drive and messed around with the resolution. Nothing much to that. Flanger. Flanger is a really helpful tool for creating explosion sounds. Um, if you listen to any explosions online, like maybe you want a reference of grenade sound, um, you kind of hear, you can kind of hear the sound sort of moving. You get this sort of noise which a flanger can create quite well um, I didn't put too much on it I dropped the mix down a bit um, well I did boost the intensity but I've made I've made the actual speed of it quite slow pulled the feedback down a bit um, and what's nice is if you wanted a few sort of variations of the grenade sound uh, you could just basically bounce down a bounce down all your audio a few different times with the um, the flanger adjusted it ever so slightly each time and that will sort of slightly change it um, so I'm going to stick that back on and then lastly I just compressed it a bit really quick attack which is a bit irrelevant considering <laughs> I automated it in the end uh, boosted the ratio up quite high um, again that's something you might need to adjust depending on what you do so that's the trash can next uh, I recorded some cutlery again I've stretched it out and I think I did I automate it no okay I didn't automate the cutlery so let's take everything off let's have a listen to cutlery on its own oh whoops there we go. So all I did with the cutlery was I took a load of knives, forks and spoons, metal knives, forks and spoons, just dropped them on the table and recorded that. And the idea was to try and capture a lot of high frequencies, um, which you would hear on the beginning of the explosion. Um, generally with explosions, you tend to hear, you tend to hear the whole sound. As soon as you hear the explosion, you tend to hear all the frequencies, but then the high frequencies sort of die off first, then the mids, and then the lows are the last sort of things you hear, which is what I've tried to basically recreate here. And as we go through the sounds, you'll see how all the high frequencies, which are these two here, they die out really quickly. Mids last a little bit longer, and then our lows last even longer. So that's kind of what I was trying to emulate. Uh, let me quickly stick the stretch back on. So let's have a look at our what I've done again I monitored it just because I had to record it in stereo uh, EQ took a good bit of the lows out kept most of the mids and there was a little bit too much um, high frequencies between 5 and 10 and it was a bit ear piercing so I took that out as well let's turn that back on overdrive so I basically distortion messed around with the tone of the drive till I got something I wanted space designer this time I, I just used one of the uh, presets in um, the space designer and just found a reverb I like, so let's turn it back on. Flanger, uh, again, you can mess around with flangers till you find something you like, and then compressor. Okay, uh, let's have a listen to how that sounds now. Oh, sounds really good. We won't hear, I think, if I quickly take that off, yeah. Okay, so it sits, volume wise, it sits sort of in the middle, uh, which works quite well. Next. Guitar string. Now, the idea of the guitar string um, is to basically, it was basically to sound like something igniting or a spark. Um, so what I did is I took my guitar and I think I just took the top E string and just rubbed a plectrum uh, across it a few times um, just till I found a sound I liked. Uh, let's just check I haven't stretched. Oh, I have stretched out. Okay. Let's take that off. Let's take all the effects off. And turn that off. Let's have a listen to it uh, just without any effects. Okay, so that's literally me just rubbing a pick along a guitar string. Um, then I stretch it out uh, just a little bit, not too much. Then I've also, again, pitch, because, no, not pitch, sorry, gain, because I've recorded it wrong. <laughs> There's a few errors in this, I suppose. Uh, EQ, again, so I, most of the sound was coming from the mids, from 1 to 2K, so I boosted that. Turn that back on. Now pitch, what I did is I wanted to wanted to emulate the sound of the sort of spark as I said earlier. So I wanted the pitch to start high and drop quite low. So I turn that back on and come back to my automation. I that's what I did here. I've automated it. So that starts off with a really high pitch and then drops. 
So let's have a listen to it with that. So it's, like, it's kind of like a, a pew sound. <laughs> it's the best way I can describe it, a pew sound. Um, what else have I done? So Space Designer, again. So I've used that Balloon Pop reverb again, which I created myself. Turn it back on. And then some more compression there. So all together we get this. And so yeah, like I said, the idea was to create um, a spark or an ignition. And so sort of, I guess also layer the high frequencies a bit. Um, so we're not just hearing the cut right here. Next is uh, the low noise blast. Now this isn't a recording, as you can see, this is a MIDI file. I've used the ES2 synthesizer. This is the bulk of our explosion. So let's play this on its own. So as you can hear, most of our sound is gonna come from this. If I just quickly have a look at the ES2 synthesizer, what I've done. So I've just used one oscillator. Um, I've just used the noise on it. Uh, what else did I do? Not a lot, to be honest. I gave it a few more voices. Um, yeah, not too much. Turn the filters off. Uh, oh, I've added some distortion, as you can see there, which I've also done here. Now, basically, <laughs> the low noise has a lot of distortion, which is what we want. It's just noise, really. Um, so, and then the envelope, I took some attack off uh, and then messed around. I sort of balanced it till, basically, I wanted it to start quickly, drop slowly, which is the idea. So, if we have a listen again, that's kind of what we get. Uh, so effects, EQ again, so this is going to be, so as this is the bulk of the sound, the bulk of the blast, it's a lot of low frequency. So I boosted that and took all the highs out because high noise doesn't really work for explosions because it just sounds hissy, uh, which is why I've mainly recreated the highs uh, with the cutter in the guitar string. So I took all that out. Overdrive, so boosted distortion quite heavily as you can see. Uh, I've also uh, combined that with the bit crusher to you know really twist the noise space designer oh would you look at that the <laughs> same reverb balloon pop as you can see it works quite well for this sound and i've well as you can see i've used it quite a lot uh and then finally some compression once again there uh last but not least this is a bit optional i just i wanted to thicken it ever so slightly a little bit more so i added some more noise but this time with the um uh, just with the mids, so I took lows out and focus on sort of hissy, sort of mid leak noises. Um, this is what I've done in the years too. So I added a lot more voices, messed around with the envelope again. That's all I've really done. The distortion stayed the same, only using one oscillator. There's not much to say about it, really. Let's have a listen to it on its own. So, again, that's just to thicken up the sound. And as you notice, I've automated it so it doesn't come in straight away. Um, I let the the low noise blast sort of kick in first and then the mid noise fill out the, uh, I suppose the rest of the sound, the filling, the, the meat of the explosion. Uh, again, similar sort of stuff. EQ'd it so I just took lows and highs out, I just want the mids. Um, overdrive quite heavily. Bit crusher, again, a lot of drive. Messed around with the resolution till I found something I want. Flanger, again, flanger is great for this kind of thing. Uh, it really works for explosions, the effects you get from it. Space designer again, balloon pop, uh, and then compression. Okay, so as you can see, a lot of a lot of basically what I've done is taken noises, distorted it to hell, compressed it fairly heavily, uh, and then added that reverb, that balloon pop reverb, which I will show you. I'm going to try to remember to show you at the end. Um, yes, yeah, so that's the main. That's mainly all there is to it. To the blast. Let's have a look at the tail now. So like I said earlier. The idea of the tail was to create fire or like a little sort of sort of create cinders, you know. So what I've basically done is I've taken things like wrapping paper, bubble wrap and all that sort of stuff. And I've just twisted it into a mic and just, you know, molded it till I got something I wanted uh, and then automated it. So it doesn't come in too much. Um, and again, as you can see, I've already used the overdrive and the bit crusher. Um, oh, what I forgot to mention is, in fact, I'll mention this at the end. So this bus is basically... Um, sending the this channel to uh, reverb again and as you can see it's the balloon pop so i'll explain that bit um of that at the end uh so i don't know why i've labeled this fire i think this was just um like a crisp packet or something let's have to listen to that in fact let me quickly turn it up for this just so you can hear it so there you go that's me just rustling some crisp packets with some reverb and distortion on uh i think I've just done this a few times. Is this the same? Let's have a listen. Yeah, so very similar. Just crisp packets. I'm rustling there. Uh, and again, distortion, 
reverb, all that good stuff. Foil, so this time I've used sort of um, foil, wrapping foil, done the same thing. Let's have a listen to that, turn it up a bit. There we go, pull that down a bit again. And then bubble wrap, this is kind of, bubble wrap's really good. What I did is I got a load of bubble wrap and just twisted it and this sounds like the kind of the cracks you hear in fire. So let's have a listen to that. Oh, whoops. Let me turn that up a bit actually, one second. There we go. Let's turn it down again, sit that there. And then I've added some more noise and this is to just sort of sit with the rest of the uh, sounds I've got here as opposed to the blast one earlier that just comes in straight away is the bulk of the sound this one is just to sort of support um, These sounds and make it sound like there's sort of a fire has been started uh, So let's have a listen to that on its own So on its own doesn't sound like much but if I play it with the rest of the tail There we go together it all sounds kind of like a fire's just started um and I think that is mainly it, yeah, okay. So let's quickly have a look at this bus. So basically what I've done is I've bussed um, our balloon pop reverb on its own because one, I wanted to use it for all of these and keep it quite even. Uh, two, if I go back to the blast and back to the trash can, uh, I've also, oh, I took it off in the end. Okay, never mind. I think originally, originally I sent it to the reverb um, just to extend the sound a bit, but I think it works without, so I've taken it off. Okay, so that's one thing you could do if you want. Just send a bus to, or send some of your audio tracks to a bus if you want to. Um, give them all the same reverb. Um, I think, uh, trying to think that's all there is to it. Oh yeah, I was quick. so I'll quickly show you the, let's use the guitar string. Quickly show you the sound of the reverb I used. So is this using balloon pop? Yep. So just how that sounds on its own. Let's stretch doesn't really matter does it no we can leave that again uh, take all this off uh, so let's have a listen to the reverb just on the guitar string oh that didn't really work <laughs> let's try and extend it quickly uh, hopefully that gives you an idea basically what I'm trying to show is that as opposed to a lot of the presets uh, in the spaces art designer which can sound kind of hissy on the high end um, this one I made is very sort of middle focus. It's very sort of almost mid lows. It's boomy, which works great, you know. If you were to make your own reverb, you know, try recording, try recording a balloon pop in maybe uh, churches like I've done or swimming bars, they give great, or like squash sort of um, courts, they're great as well. Places with big, long, um, dark sounding almost reverbs. Um, so, yeah. I think that's all there is to it. Let's have one final listen on its own, just to show what I've created by moulding these all together. There we go. Sounds pretty cool together. I think actually I may have. I think the cut really sounded a bit too much in that one, but oh well, it doesn't matter. So yeah, uh, that's been how I went about making a grenade sound effect. Um, let me know if this helped. Uh, if there's anything you want to see in the future, um, hopefully this has given you some ideas on how to create uh, explosions because they are they are quite tricky I mean if you look on the I'll put a link in the description of one of my sound design demos it's basically of um, a short level from Ratchet and Clank and I've made explosions in there but I've I've sort of not done the high end very well so it just sounds a bit sort of flat so hopefully you know this will help you give you some ideas to create some believable explosions um, I've been Henry Scott and thanks very much for watching <laughs>